Hello, this is Thomas K4SWL. If you're new here, I usually do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos, and so most of my videos are in the field, but today, obviously, I'm not in the field. I'm here in the shack on my workbench, and um, I have the USDX USDR here in front of me. This is a Chinese version of an open source project. And um, basically, I wanted to do a quick video because I'm packing this thing up and sending it back. Um, I just can't live with it. Um, so I purchased this radio, I think at the end of October, or yeah, I think it was the end of October, and I received it about uh, um, five weeks later uh, from directly from a retailer on eBay in China. And um, I bought it. I, I wasn't really interested in the radio, but I bought it because so many people had asked me about it. And I'd seen a couple of videos uh, showing, uh, you know, some single sideband contacts with it that were really impressive. Uh, not that it had as much to do with the radio as the antenna, but um, so many people were asking me about it. I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and buy this. It's so affordable. I paid $185 shipped from China. And uh, so I thought I'd give it a go. But it has some problems I just can't live with. <laughs> so I thought what I would do today really quickly before I pack it up is show you maybe I'll show you some of the good points about this radio and these are the things I'm sure probably you know um, encourage people to purchase it but uh, some of the things I don't like about it. So um, let me turn down the volume here. Okay, so um, basically, uh, this radio is supposed to be an eight band radio. I found that it was actually 10 bands on the one I have. Um, the ex the, the, these are in the pro categories right here. The exterior construction is actually really good. I like the knob, I like the buttons, I like, I mean, it's, it's a hefty little radio and it's really small. I mean, it would definitely fit in a backpack or something. You could bang it around and probably be just fine. Um, you know, which is really good. Um, when you're operating CW, another positive is it doesn't have any relay noise or anything. Some people don't like that. Um, it sounds okay in CW. It's not too bad. Um, it has a lot of built-in features, uh, like especially a microphone that's built in, which is perfect for field operation if you're doing single sideband. I never tested this, but there are other people on YouTube who have. Um, I just didn't do any single sideband with this at all because, <clears throat> frankly, I'm more of a CW operator, and um, I just never made it that far. I fell out of love with this too quickly. <laughs> um, I never fell in love with it to begin with, to be honest. But, um, you know, I just I just felt like any more time invested in this just wasn't worth it. Um, the um, So it does support multiple modes. Um, you know, uh, it'll do upper sideband, lower sideband, CW, AM, and FM. The power output uh, can be up to 10 watts. Uh, with this, if you're supplying it with 13.8 volts, at least per the manufacturer. Um, this right now is running off of the internal battery. There's actually a separate, um, there's a separate uh, port right here to charge it. And there's a separate port right here for a 13.8 volt uh, supply. Then there's a three-way switch. One is to run it off the battery, one is off, and the other is with 13.8 volts coming into it. Um, on this side of the radio, you have the key. Um, and then you have like amplifier mic and uh, speaker connections and um, uh, com I think that's a comm connection there on the side. It has a front facing speaker, which is a uh, good, good in theory, actually. And, you know, the encoder knob feels really nice. I think it's made of aluminum um, and a backlit really simple. That's hard to see here, frankly, on uh, this camera, uh, but this it's a backlit uh, uh, display and um, those are some of the positives. And I guess the other positive, obviously, is it's very, very affordable. At 185 shipped, it is a super affordable multi-band, uh, multi-mode <laughs> radio. Um, but let me talk about the cons. Uh, first of all, I had planned to do a park or a summit activation with just, just to show what it's like. Um, but um, there, there are two reasons I'm not doing that. Number one, um, I went to my buddy Vlado's place, uh, his uh, workbench, um, a couple weeks ago, and we put this on a service monitor and looked at it on the scope. And the, there, the CW King is a little noisy on this. It also produces um, second, third harmonic, at least, um, spurs, 
we, on that service monitor, it had been a while since that one had been calibrated and everything, we couldn't verify exactly if it was over what the FCC would consider their spectral purity uh, benchmarks. But um, I'm going to assume that if it if it isn't over it, it's awfully close. And frankly, that's a, it, it produces a fairly dirty signal. And that's a really big issue because I like being a good neighbor when I'm using a radio. I don't want to use a radio that's causing spurs and, and it looks all nasty um, on a spectrum display. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's just not something I'm going to do. Secondly, even if this, even if this produced beautifully clean transmit, there's there are two reasons why I would still send this back. Number one is the audio. Audio on this is just horrible, like really bad. <laughs> I'll try to turn up the volume. At first, I thought that you had to do a menu and then click this to turn up the volume. But you can actually um, press and hold and turn. It'll get a little wonky on you sometimes. Sometimes the, the numbers will kind of go weird but you can use this to change it. Um, I prob probably can't pull up an example in such a short uh, period of time here. But just listen to the audio. I'll try to be really quiet so the camera can pick it up. Now I'll turn down the volume and listen to this. You still hear scratchiness. That is part of the receive, the receive signal still popping through the audio. It just creates this kind of hash constantly. If you go very high, if you go very high in the volume, it'll just squeal. I'm not gonna do that on camera. <laughs> it's just too loud. But it'll just produce a squeal, usually if you go above 14 um, on the um, volume level. Also, I have been on the bands enough uh, to check this out that I um, uh, basically decided that there's no possible way I could live with uh, how wide open the front end is on this receiver. It is as wide open as a barn door. And um, I've tried to chase um, parts on the air contacts before I put this on a spectrum scope and everything. I tried to chase a couple of park activators. And if they had any kind of pile up at all, like even just two people calling them, this thing sort of fell apart. It just it didn't sound good. It, it couldn't delineate the signals. Um, and when uh, someone was really strong, including the activator, it would kind of open up the window for the receiver to pick things up, you know, like 20 or 30, 40 kilohertz away. Um, I was listening to a CW activator um, in the lower portion of the CW bands on 20 meters uh, one day. And when they would key up, it would open up the receiver to the point that I would hear FT8 from the FT8 portion of the band uh, coming through the audio. And I don't know if you've seen any of my recent videos, but my last two summit activations at least at time of this being posted, were on uh, Mount Mitchell and uh, Flat Top Mountain. Both of those, I had a pile up that would have absolutely destroyed this radio. <laughs> I mean, there's no way I would have been able to understand anything that was being sent to me because number one, the audio is so poor. Number two, it wouldn't have been able to handle those multiple signals coming in. And so it's just kind of a useless radio to me. I don't want to sell it. Um, I, I was thought about just in fact, the, the, initial, the initial thought when I bought this was that I'd buy it, uh, play with it, show how it works, maybe some of the pros and cons, write up a review, and then uh, sell it afterwards uh, to someone who likes this kind of radio. Um, I wanted this to perform better than it did, um, but unfortunately, it's just not a quality product. And if you're looking for something and you just like to play with really super cheap radios, you know, if you get this, I would just say that you need to do something to the transmit filtering on it so that you're not creating any spurs, or at least it's, you know, very acceptable. Maybe do something to clean up the CW um, signal on this. I haven't checked single sideband to see what it would be like. 
um, but I definitely saw a lot of dirtiness around the signal um, uh, when we put it on the service monitor. And actually, even though that service monitor hadn't been calibrated in a while, uh, as a comparison, I put my Elecraft KX2 on there, and it was like orders of magnitude better. So I know this thing is sending out a dirty signal. Um, the um, just I would just encourage you to maybe spend a bit more uh, instead of getting this radio um, as cheap as it is. Or if you're getting it just for experimenting, then plan to crack it open and change some things in it because it's just as is, uh, is I would never, I would never take this to a summit, for example, because sometimes, especially when you're on a summit, if the, if the stars align, you can have, and especially in CW, you can have a pretty big pileup. And I don't think I could, I really don't think it would be possible to operate a pileup on this. I also don't think you could operate this on any day where there's a lot of signal density on the bands, say, for example, during a contest or something, even if you're nowhere near the contest, um, signals, I suspect this will overload when you try to do that. Um, this receiver very easily overloads. And But again, the audio, when I took this to my friend uh, Vlado to put it on the service monitor, the first thing he noticed is how bad, kind of raspy and distorted the audio is. It's just not good. It's, so you can hear the, that's, F, that's in the FT portion. I also don't like the ergonomics of this. I, I don't enjoy something that I have to to change the band. You have to do so much. Just listen to how the noise floor is just all over the place. I'm pretty sure that if Rob Sherwood tested this they would find that it he would find that it's like one of the poorest performers he's ever tested but anyway see this you can do you can get it to go up and down but i have to say um at first i didn't realize that you could press and hold and turn the volume button and my readers kind of said hey this is an easier way to do this as opposed to going into the menu because like something, if you've ever watched my videos, I ride the volume control all the time because you'll get really strong signals and really weak signals. And usually I'm in a spot where there's almost no RFI. And so there's a big difference between those two. So I'm riding the volume control. This would be a little frustrating to do because since you're, and that's another, that's another thing it does that's really annoying. So when you're using this volume control by pressing it, I'll show you what it did just now. I'll turn it back on. Um, so, I'll have the volume up here, for example, and then I'll turn it down. If you turn it down to one, see how it's kind of acting weird on me now? There you go. If I turn it down to one and I go just one below zero, it powers off and it gives me a smiley face, leaves the backlight on, <laughs> and that's it. It's bricked up. I can't do anything else with it. Well, nothing works. Nothing works. It just, it powers off like the processor, but leaves on some of the other stuff. So you have to turn it off and turn it back on again, which then resets a lot of your settings, um, like the volume. Uh, so if you're operating and you accidentally go make that go down too far, then you're going to turn off the radio. You'll have to reset it. Then it's going to reset your volume. And that could just be really confusing. I don't like the fact that the encoder and the volume are the same button because that also allows you to accidentally shift off frequency when you're trying to um, change the volume control. So anyway, I need to pack this up. I've got to leave here in like 10 minutes, so I need to pack this up really quickly, print the label, and ship it back. Thankfully, the seller that I went through on eBay, who I picked specifically because they had the highest ratings, um, uh, they do accept returns. Uh, they sent me a label to send it back, so I cannot complain at all about their service. Now, they did try to convince me to keep it. They wanted to offer me a partial credit, and I said, nope, I'm just not interested at all. Um, and this, and I should tell you, I'm not the sort of person that returns things a lot. Uh, this is probably maybe, maybe the first time I've ever returned something on eBay for all I know. Uh, I tend to buy stuff and if I don't like it, I'll just eventually sell it or give it away. Uh, is what I do. Um, but this, I don't want to be in anybody else's hands because I suspect it could be, you know, uh, kind of a dirty transceiver to operate in terms of its signal, uh, purity. So anyway, 
If you got any questions about this, let me know. If you own one of these and enjoy it, if you've modified it uh, to make it work better, uh, please leave me a comment. I am certain that the quality control between unit to unit is probably dramatic. And I may have just gotten a poor performer. Um, I don't know. Uh, so keep that in mind. I'm sure some people have gotten some. And I've seen some YouTube videos where I swear these things performed a little better than mine does. So it could be a quality control issue. Um, I don't know. But I would just caution you on buying these things, especially if the transmit is not really clean. Um, other than just for pure experimenting uh, on the receive side of things, I would just wouldn't I wouldn't mess with these. Um, okay, so I'll finish this up. Uh, thank you so much. If you enjoy the channel here, press subscribe. Um, otherwise, until next time, seven threes.